Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> this is uh, uh, our first presentation about construction methods. Uh, so today I'll be presenting a conference paper that I have co-authored with uh, two previous groups within this course who actually did uh, their project about uh, uh, construction of caissons at two different uh, years. However, I combined their work and added to it in order to uh, uh, have this paper presented in the Canadian Society of Civil Engineers Conference in 2015. So first, what is a caisson? A caisson uh, is one of the types of deep foundations. Uh, it, the word origin is caisse, which is French, which means a chest or a case. It is mainly used to uh, uh, retain water or soil and as a permanent uh, foundation system. So if maybe you have a, a multi-story basement or you have a bridge pier or something like that, this would be ideal for something like that. So we have three main types of large caissons. Uh, uh, first, box caisson, open caissons, are most of these are categorized as standard caissons. However, uh, uh, an unconventional type is the pneumatic caisson. We'll start first by the box case, which is, you could say this is the simplest of them. So simply, uh, the construction procedure is that the, there is the, the, the uh, uh, seabed or riverbed is pre-dredged in order to place new sand layer to have a, a sufficient bearing capacity. And simultaneously, the prefabricated uh, the, the first part of the RC caisson is prefabricated on shore. Then it's floated to the location at which it will be resting. Then using, uh, 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 mostly using uh, uh, slip forms, it will be immersed into, uh, 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 to rest on the base layer. However, this could be done maybe by adding weights using concrete or aggregates or blocks, depending on the case. However, it has limitations that first it cannot be used in the dry. It's only in the middle of the sea or the river. Um, and also it could not be used in cases of high water currents because the, that could erode the foundation. And it is, as a foundation system, it is end-bearing. So it could only depend on a soil that has sufficient bearing capacity. But it's easy, very easy to construct. It's much faster than open casing. It has minimal risk of tilting in construction when compared to open case. So that takes us to open cases. Open cases are very simple. In terms of you are having a casing from its name that's open from the top and the bottom. And it's going into the soil by uh, just a cutting shoe. So simply, the casing is precast on shore or moved to location. By the way, it could be on shore, it could be in the middle of land. It uh, doesn't make a big difference. Um, as the excavation proceeds and the casing sinks, additional sections are added to the shaft above. The process uh, continues until the casing has sunk to the required depth. A floor of termite concrete is laid to provide a bottom seal. And finally, dredging wells can then be filled with concrete to complete the structures. So, uh, 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 um, the basic limitation here is that you are using a cutting shoe, that it could be subject to structural failure in case of cutting into firm soils. So I have a problem here. The sequence of construction could carry high probabilities of tilting uh, during, the, uh, during the, 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 the addition of sections above. So again, because it is mainly depending on skin friction, so it's not suitable for frictionless soils. And it's risky in uh, some cases of uncertain soil conditions and it is slow. Um, however, the main advantage is it doesn't necessarily depend on soil and bearing capacity at all. It could be used in the middle of the water on the land. It could reach locations deeper than other types. However, the, the, the more 
type is the pneumatic case. A pneumatic case, and it's mainly con the, the basic idea is that I'm having here a workspace. This workspace uh, uh, is uh, has pressurized air, air pumped into it, and there is a tube that personnel could use in t in order to access that workspace. So now you could have the advantage of the open case, and however you could work in the dry in a dry condition. You could excavate in a dry condition. So first it starts by surface leveling. Then uh, uh, you, you should construct the working chamber that is pressurized at the same time the ground water pressure in or, uh, uh, at the same ground water pressure in order to make it watertight. Then shafts are used to enter or exit the pressurized chamber and to remove the excavated soil. Excavation is done in a three to four meter intervals. Then uh, again the cutting uh, head, uh, the cutting shoe is used in order to enter the uh, uh, penetrate into the soil and you are adding sections from above. Uh, uh, finally, when you reach uh, uh, the depth, you check it and the bearing and check the bearing capacity, and remove the equipment from the pressurized chamber, and then fill the pressurized chamber with concrete. So now you have something that is hybrid. It's it's not only end bearing. It's not purely friction. It, it, it skin friction uh, in terms of uh, geotechnical system. It depends on both end bearing and. Uh, 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 Friction. So the limitations here is that you have high hazard of casein disease, which will be discussed more in a case study here. Y you you have a limited limit of depth of 35 meters below water surface, except if you are using robots. So if you are using personnel people, you, you have a limit of this 35 meters. If you are using robots, you don't have that limit. Uh, it's it's the most mechanized method, so it's capital intensive. It needs a highly skilled labor and highly skilled contractors to do it, so that's a lot of expense. Um, however, it's the fastest. It's suitable for nearly any soil. It's suitable in the land or in water. It's the lowest construction-related risk, if you could say. However, there is an occupational health and safety issue if you are working at really deep locations. So this is the selection criteria. This is a very nice comparison between the box, the open, and the pneumatic casings. Uh, as this is a summary of what actually we were mentioning uh, uh, while we were talking uh, uh, in the uh, presentation itself. Uh, we'll talk about two case studies here. First is a, a very historic, uh, nice case, which is the Brooklyn Bridge Casin. This is the first pneumatic casing on Earth. It's uh, in, in New York. It was done from 1870 to 1883. Uh, they were two wooden yellow pine casings constructed. The first was 52.4 meters by 31 meters by 9.6 meters high on completion. The second was 51.2 by 31 meters by 6.55 meters high on completion. So mainly they started building the first 4.4 meters of casing at the shipyard. Then the casing was hauled into position. Then the labors were placed inside the casing. Compressed air was pumped in the casing. Uh, the workers excavated while the ca case the, the, the workers excavated while the casing was incrementally sunk into the riverbed by adding heavy weights of rocks on the top. However, again here what was uh, 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 was was happening is that this was the first case of a pneumatic casing, and this is was the first exposure to what's called the Casein disease, which is actually due to high uh, high uh, 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 pressure, uh, some people will start suffering from a lot of uh, uh, problems, and 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 uh, it, it's significantly serious if you are reaching a depth more than 35. So, but let's let's look whether there was an availability of another method to be used. So using an open casing would have carried high risks of cutting edge destruction as the soil contains significant amount of boulders. That's a problem with open casing. The box case in such a case was nearly impossible as at that era it involved replacing the first layer of organic soil in the riverbed by a layer of sand and the suitable equipment for such a job weren't available by that time. So the pneumatic casing was the only available option. Then the second case study, the New Tacoma Narrows Bridge. 
the the casings in that project are one of the largest casings ever built. Each of the two bridge pier casings was about 24.4 meters wide and 39.6 long in plan. The water depth range between 39 meters and 45 meters. So again, uh, if we look at the sequence, we'll find that precast the, they precast the first 3.7 meters of caisson. They floated the caisson to its location. They held the caisson in place until using mooring cables. They poured concrete using slip forms. They removed mooring cables and they poured the cap. So again, this is a very special case as the cutting mechanism in soil is similar to that of an open caisson. However, they used half cylinder at the caisson cutting edge transition that makes it transported and sunk as a floating box case. So they gathered the merits of both methods. The sandy soil had a high bearing capacity but not enough to carry the gigantic weight while using an open caisson and depending totally on the skin friction of the portion in contact with the soil would have also been insufficient. Hence these caissons and, uh, and the merits of both types had the merit of both types avoiding the drawbacks of each of them and having several low transfer mechanisms and also facilitating floating the first sections of the caisson to the site. In conclusion, when examining the methods applied in the two cases discussed uh, here against the developed selection criteria, the selection criteria proved that it covered the different aspects governing the selection of the most suitable methods for the different case and construction cases. It is highly recommended when using the selection criteria matrix to take all of the factors governing the method selection into account as neglecting some of them could cause uh, These are the acknowledgments and here are the references and thank you.